fly tying, the economics, and more. So it's been a while since I made a video. Where I live, the rivers have started to freeze over, so I haven't touched them in a while. I thought I'd make a video about fly tying, since this is generally what I do in the winter. This video will discuss the benefits of buying flies versus tying your own. I'll also mention a number of things I do to reduce the cost when tying my own flies. Buying versus tying. In today's market, buying flies is much cheaper than tying your own. Commercial fly tying has largely been outsourced to developing countries around the world, so it's pretty hard to beat. The quality will vary between distributors, but one thing is clear, the price cannot be beat. I've seen flies as low as 30 cents out there, but that's been a while ago, I'm not really sure where they're at now. So you're probably wondering, why would anyone tie their own flies when they could buy them for much less? The appeal of fly tying isn't about saving money, though in many instances you can. The appeal is more about creating something for yourself and putting your own signature on the fly. Here are some reasons why I tie. The first reason most people tie flies is because they enjoy tying flies. Uh, during the winter, a lot of guys are not on the water, so they have a lot of free time, and what better to do with that free time than tie a few flies. The next benefit about fly tying is it's quite rewarding. There's nothing like tying a pattern and catching a fish with it. So at the end of the day, if you fly fish, this will further enhance the experience. The next great thing about fly tying is you can tie whatever you want. You can experiment with different patterns by adding and removing from known patterns, or you can go off and create something completely original. It's entirely up to you. Another reason why a lot of people tie flies is because they don't have access to a local fly shop. Sure, you could buy flies online, but that generally takes time to ship. If you tie your own flies, you could tie them and have them on the water right away. And finally, tying your own flies can save you money. I know earlier I said that tying is generally more expensive than buying, but if you are very disciplined and you do it right, you can save money. One of the reasons that got me into fly tying is because I didn't have a large selection of chronomids. Chronomids are easy to tie and are very cheap to tie as well. And if you know anything about fish and chronomids, you know you need lots of them, in many different sizes and in many different colors. And if you were to buy them from the store, you would spend quite a bit of money collecting these, but by tying your own, you will save a lot of money. So those are the main reasons why people tie their own flies. I'm sure there are many other reasons out there that I didn't present, but those are generally the most popular ones. Of course, tying flies has negatives too, but those are mainly associated with cost and time. Reducing costs. As I mentioned before, tying flies is not going to save you money, but there's no reason why you can't save some money doing it. So the first way I reduce costs is to buy bulk. Of course, buying bulk increases the initial cost, but over time you will have significant savings. Some things I like to buy are entire capes versus buying packages of feathers, and buying entire rabbits versus rabbit strips. Uh, rabbit strips I find are kind of expensive. Uh, buying an entire rabbit is quite a bit cheaper. Uh, these are just some of the ways, but there are plenty of different ways out there to buy bulk. The next way I like to reduce costs is to buy my materials at craft stores. Craft stores have many of the same materials as your local fly shop, but are marked up significantly less. Uh, the items that I like to purchase are foam, wire, antron, dubbing, yarn, the list goes on. You can pretty much find most of the materials there. The next way to reduce costs is pretty obvious, and that's to buy online. Of course there's advantages to it and disadvantages to it, such as when you're buying online, you won't be able to scope with the material and you won't be supporting local businesses. But just know that buying online will save you some money if you want to go down that route. Another way to reduce costs is to begin substituting materials. Substitute materials that you don't have with materials that you do have. The main reason people spend so much money tying flies is because they buy so much material and only use it to tie a few flies. Of course, all materials cannot be substituted but a lot of it can, and it's up to you to figure that out. Sure, the fly may look slightly different than it was intended to, but it doesn't matter that much. Who knows, it might even be better than the original. Tying durable flies is another way to reduce some costs. One of my gripes about commercially tied flies is they're very pretty, but a lot of them don't hold up over time. As a fly tire, we can tie pretty flies, but add extra wraps of thread and load them up with head cement. This way, they'll be much more durable and we can use them for a longer period of time. Much like your personal finances, logging your costs will help you save money. Fly tying material really isn't that much, but it certainly adds up. 
by tracking your costs, you begin to really see it add up. A couple bucks here and there doesn't seem all that much, but over time, it can be significant. Another reason why I like to log costs is because I can see the materials I've purchased with a quick glance rather than go through all my material. It really helps so I don't rebuy things I already own. Repairing flies and reusing materials. Another great thing about fly tying is you can also repair flies. Before I started tying my own flies, I purchased hundreds of flies from a commercial tire. The flies looked great, but they just weren't very durable. When they did come loose after fishing, I would just take them home, um, just tie a few wraps around the head and just put some more cement on. After that, the flies were good as new. In fact, they're actually probably more durable than they ever were. And if you come into a situation where the fly is beyond repair, um, also take these flies home too, because there are a lot of materials on them that can be reused, notably the hook. If you're like me and you fish a lot of large streamers, this is a great practice, because as we know, large streamers cost a lot more money to make. So if you can save the large streamer hook or rabbit strips or whatever it is, this will lead to a significant savings. So that basically sums up why I and so many other people tie their own flies. Hopefully this video has given you some ideas on how to reduce costs tying your own flies, and maybe if you aren't already tying your own flies, this gives you some reason to do so. Thanks for watching.